How do you check whether a particular control system is stable? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju, and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community, where I make it very easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. How do you actually check whether a particular control system is actually stable? Well, let's find out. So, in order to check the stability of a particular linear control system, there are a set of criteria that a particular control system must follow. So, what are these criteria? Well, let's find out what these criteria are. So, the first criteria that a particular control system must obey is the fact that for a bounded input, it must produce a bounded input output. That is very simple. That is, let us consider that we have a finite amount of input values, say 1 to 10. So, if we have a finite amount of input values, say 1 to 10, then the output values must also be finite, say 50 to 100. Let me make that even more simplified for you. So here, let us assume a particular graph like this. So now here, let us assume the values from say 0 to say 10. So here, this is the input. So here, for this particular value of the input, let this amplitude be the output. So here, if this, we are obtaining a graph like this over here, then what we observe is that for each value of this input, the output is bounded. That is, it will have a maximum value and a minimum value. So here, for a bounded input, we are obtaining a bounded output. So therefore, such kind of a system is said to be a stable system. So then, what is the case when the system is unstable? So here, let us assume the same case like this. So let us assume that we have an input from 0 to 10 like this. So now, let us assume that rather than this particular signal, we rather got a ramp signal as the output. So a ramp signal would look somewhat like this. So here, here there is a finite value, but here as the value of the input increases, the output is keeping on increasing. That is, there is no bounded value for the output. So therefore here, for a bounded value of the input, there is no bounded value of the output as it keeps on increasing like this. So therefore this is an unstable system, whereas this is a stable system. So therefore, writing it down, we can say that a system is stable when a particular bounded input of values produces a bounded output of values. So this is the first criteria control system must satisfy in order to see if it is a stable control system. So next, let us consider a particular control system. So here, let us assume that we are giving a particular input and let us say we are getting a particular output value like this. But at this particular point over here, let us assume that we are removing the input value. So the input is only till this much. So at this particular point, we are removing this particular input. So when we remove this input, if this particular output of this control system slowly tends to zero, irrespective of the initial condition over here when the input was present, then such kind of a control system is what you refer to as an asymptotically stable control system. Very simple, guys. So a system is said to be an asymptotically stable system if in the absence of a particular input, the output value of this particular system tends towards zero. So here it tends towards zero like this, irrespective of the initial condition of that particular control system. Such kind of a control system is simply what you refer to as an asymptotically stable control system. So the next criteria for the stability of a control system depends on the transfer function of that particular control system. So here the transfer function of a particular control system would look like 
say t of s is equal to a particular numerator divided by a particular denominator. So here the value of s for which the numerator becomes zero is what you refer to as zeros of a particular function. And here the values of s for which the denominator becomes zero is simply what you refer to as poles. So here when we consider a particular s plane in which here we have sigma and here we have j omega, then a particular control system is said to be stable if all the values of this particular pole lies in the left half of this particular S plane. That is it can be here, 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 or here, or here. It must be in the left half of this particular S plane. So if the value of the poles of a particular control system lies in the left half of that particular S plane, then that particular control system is said to be a stable control system. So putting it in simple terms, here this is the imaginary part and here this is the real part. So in the case of a stable control system, the poles must have negative real parts. So a control system is said to be stable if all the poles are located on the left half of the S plane. So here let us assume that the pole of a particular control system is here at say S is equal to say minus 3. So let the pole of a particular system A be at S is equal to minus 3. And now if for another system say B, if the pole is at say S is equal to minus 1, then system B stability is less than system A. That is, as the value of the poles go towards the zero of a particular S plane, then the stability also decreases of that particular control system. So as the poles approaches zero, the stability decreases of a control system. So now what if the poles are on the imaginary axis of a particular S plane? That is what if the poles of different systems are on the imaginary axis of the S plane? Then is it said to be stable? Then if the poles are on the imaginary axis then they are said to be marginally stable. Considering the fact that these poles do not repeat. That is, this cannot be plus 2 and minus 2. This can be plus 2 and minus 3, but these can't repeat. So here, considering the fact that they are not repeating poles, if they are on the imaginary axis, then they are said to be marginally stable. So when the poles are on the imaginary axis of the S plane, then the system is said to be marginally stable, considering the fact that the poles do not repeat. So now let us assume that we have two poles over here like this, say S is equal to minus 3 and say S is equal to minus 1. So here the pole which is closest to 0 is called a dominant pole. So the poles that are closest to the origin are called the dominant poles. So these thus are the various criteria a control system must satisfy in order to be a stable control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. As simple as that. So I hope you guys now have clear understanding of how you can determine the stability of a linear control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.